What's up, it's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. This is gonna be my December wrap up. All right, hello, it's currently January 6th as I'm filming this, so let's hope it goes up before the 15th because I'm ready to put 2023 fully behind me. I'm actually on sprints right now with Molly, so I have like 30 minutes to film as much as I can and then I'll come back after. Anywho, so last month I read 31 books in 31 days and that was my main goal that I wanted to accomplish in December. It was like a last minute goal that I set for myself, just cram as many books as I can. The idea was to also complete reading goals in those 31 books, which I did in a couple vlogs, you'll see. They'll probably go up after this at this point. Regardless, I fulfilled it, hold the applause. Whatever, honestly, it was not worth it because now I'm kind of burnt out and I've been reading really slowly this first week of the year. So also last month, I was super late to the game. I was approximately two months late actually in hearing about the St. Martin's Press boycott. So I do have to refrain from talking about, I believe two of the books that are in here. So when I pull them out of my handy dandy skull because I am going to be doing the reread rewrite burn tag format for another year. I will not mention the titles. We're going to refrain from talking about them as much as possible or period. But yeah, so I have to do a lot of editing for like my last couple vlogs and taking out a lot of footage for that. If you were unaware of the boycott, no worries. I will have some links with more information down below. There's also a petition that you can sign. It's basically targeting marketing for St. Martin's Press and every imprint under them due to violent racism publicly hosted by a marketing employee for St. Martin's Press and it also affected how that person did their job in distributing ARCs to BIPOC influencers. So it harmed a lot of people in several ways. This boycott is for St. Martin's Press lack of accountability in acting upon it. So unfortunately this is what we're doing. We're withholding reviews for books under Wednesday Books, Griffin, just St. Martin's Press in general, and there are a few other that I always forget, but it'll be in the links down below. Anyway, I'm gonna go right on into my recap as always. And like I said, 31 books. Oh, I never filled it out. Fuck, I hate when I do this. I guess we'll just find out together. So number of pages, I did not calculate, but 31 books is a lot of pages. I'm gonna be better about it for the wrap ups. Not that it matters to y'all in any way, but I like the satisfaction of adding them all up and seeing how many pages I read per month. I know my Goodreads wrapped or whatever it's called, year in your year of reading said that I read a total of 90,000-ish pages, like a little over like 90,200 or 100 something for the year. So I'm happy with that. Maybe I could hit 100,000 this year. That'll be my goal, just in my head. I do keep track of my physical pages read every day because I try to read 100 physical pages just to like carve out time in the day and I made it a habit to read 100 physical pages a day but obviously on top of that I also listen to audiobooks but just doing the math with the percentage I don't do it if you've been here a while you know this number of BIPOC authors I'm trying to be more intentional in 2024 with this so this will be the last time hopefully that it's under double digits so out of 31 books I read 1, 2, 3, 9, 10 okay I did hit double digits but that's still not even close to half of 31 so sad about that but the best book of the month so part of me wants to say house of earth and blood because i did conquer this tome this month okay and it was a journey but i gave this four stars and i had a lot of five stars especially in the beginning of the month just because i predicted a lot of it but this is a strong high four stars and i'll talk about it more later so i guess my best was king of greed by anna huang i read this on my kindle it's the third book in the kings of sin series and i've given all three of them five stars thus far i'm currently reading twisted love and not gonna lie loving it and huang can do no wrong for me king of greed made me sob i said in my vlog that if i were reading this in the beginning of last year if you knew how my life was at that point i would have been destroyed even more by this book but basically it's about this failed marriage and she wants a divorce because he is all about work obviously he's a billionaire so he well i don't know if that's obvious but <laughs> it's a billionaire romance dude's really rich well i don't even know if he's a billionaire he's just super rich he's a ceo of whatever he's always working he's forgetting about anniversaries and dates and just quality time with his wife and then he tries to get her back the whole discussion about lack of work-life balance
balance just hit really hard because that's a huge value of mine a huge like moral of mine a huge thing that i look at when i look for jobs is work-life balance so yeah it hit hard in many many ways not only in the romance itself but like the life stuff in it as well so really loved king of greed and i highly recommend if you read romance and if you're looking for an asian author to read in the romance genre the kings of sin series my worst book of the month <sighs> i don't even want to talk about it there are very few books that i like genuinely hate but this is one of them and i want to throw it into a fire this really made me mad in so many ways first of all there's not a trigger warning in this but trigger warning for self-harm this triggered me to no end in terms of that it's bad i understood the grief horror in this I liked Below by Laurel Hightower, which I also read this month. So if you're gonna choose one, I recommend Below because it's about like Mothman and it's like a blizzard and whatever. But this, I understood the grief horror and I understood the point of motherly sacrifice and this isn't that, but y'all know me and that I guess trope or premise in horror or any genre. I just don't like reading about it and I don't like how this was executed. I don't like the main character. I don't like the decision she made. I gave this one star. I will be selling it on my Pango if you're still interested to despite all that, if you've maybe seen the synopsis and it sparks joy for you, by all means, <laughs> my pango is linked down below. I'll list that eventually. That's the last time I'm talking about that book, by the way. Nonfiction for the month, I read The Creative Act, A Way of Being, which I gave five stars. So this is by Rick Rubin and apparently he's a like a music producer for some big bands. Like I'm pretty sure he produced Metallica, I think, and a few others, which I didn't know till after the fact. You can see like it's a very fast read. Oh, you can't really see but if you just do a quick flip through there's like pages like these where there's like a little mantra before the chapters the chapters are super short there are some that sound a little preachy slash a little woo woo you know and it's just like hard to grasp or you can't see yourself applying those certain things to your life but there are others that really hit me like there are some quotes about again work-life balance and turning your passions and hobbies into a job and like monetizing your hobbies which, you know, is a huge thing, especially as a content creator and on YouTube specifically. It's just a lot to think about. This had good discussions about that and quotes that really resonated with me. I read a couple in the vlog that I read this. I highly recommend if you're a creator, even if you're not a creator and you like creative things, <laughs> highly recommend. And that goes for social media content, art, music, anything. Obviously he's a music producer, so he talks a lot about artists, like music artists that he's worked with and their creative processes and stuff. And there's also like fun facts about people he's worked with or like things he's read about historical figures or whatever so this was a really well-rounded nonfiction. just move past all the stuff that don't apply to you and that you can't get behind I'm sure there's something in this for everybody that you'll find useful one way or another and I did accomplish my one nonfiction a month goal at least I know some months I read more than one so that was exciting my next category is the Kindle books that I read because I made sure to utilize my Kindle a lot more this year because I do pay for a Kindle unlimited and you know I have a Kindle and sometimes I forget I have a Kindle so I had to be more intentional with that. I actually read a couple on Kindle. Like I said I read King of Greed. I also read Necrosis by Rain Havoc. This is an extreme horror book that Joey and I read for Unmuted and Unhinged Sprints which is a perk that I have for all tiers of my Patreon. Always linked down below. We're called The Lair We're Vampire Themed. It's a fun time. We have sprints and videos with Joey. We have other exclusive videos, buddy reads, monthly readathons, movie nights, all the things. There's definitely more that I'm forgetting. The Discord? I always, I don't know why I always forget about the Discord. The Discord is literally part of my daily life. <laughs> like it's part of my daily routine. Yeah, we all get to know each other really well over there and I would love to have you as a fellow vamp if you're interested. Thank you to everyone who's joined and who's stayed from like day one, by the way. Like I am so grateful for my little community over there. I just love the lair so, so much. I just love it so much. I can't, I will, I will cry. I will cry. But this one, this was three stars for me. I like the twist. It was just a lot of honestly unnecessary type of like porn <laughs> scenes. It took too long to get to the twist, even in just a short book. I was like, I get it, she has a lot of sex, you know? But at the same time, it makes sense in the end. And there's like a little bit of magical realism in this, which I didn't expect. And once you realize what this cover actually is, it's kind of gross. So yes, there's that. Uh, we read it in a cozy cabin. I think I put up, yeah, I already put up my cozy cabin vlog. I'll link that down below. And this was one of the books I read over there. I'm sure I read more on my Kindle, but... Oh, Scream For Us. 
I don't remember the author's name, but I read this as like a last minute buzzword-a-thon book because the buzzword was like noise sounds and scream counts. So I read this literally on New Year's Eve. I gave it two stars because why did I give it two stars? Oh, I'm not a fan personally of the good girl and daddy kinks. I don't mind the daddy one as much as the good girl one. A lot of people know, no, well, not a lot of people. Some of my friends know why that triggers me. I, I just hate it. So that was all over that book, but I did like the Halloween vibes. That was cool. And like slashers were mentioned. It was a cool book, just not really for me in terms of the kink. <laughs> oh, I also read an e-arc for An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This comes out in February. I gave this one four stars. This is a Carmilla retelling, but make it Dark Academia. The characters were in college. There's a professor involved. There are vampires, obviously, because it's Carmilla retelling, and it was really good. Um, obviously, A Dowry of Blood is unmatched, but it did have good quotes and the writing was still pretty. I still enjoyed it a lot and there were some scenes that really made me forget I was reading. So that was fun. Buzzwordathon I already talked about. 500 plus pages. I accomplished that little goal that I set for myself every month that I don't actually really think about. But yep, this was 799, baby. Yes, I'm mad that she didn't fucking just go 800 pages, but whatever. And this is the longest book I've ever read in my life. That's an accomplishment. Like I said, I gave this four stars. I almost cried for a lot of, no, I did cry for a few scenes. There were maybe one or two twists that actually got me. I love the Viper Queen. Is that what, there's, what she's called? The Serpent Queen? One of those. And I was actually not confused while reading this. It took me like a week because I was reading other books in between. Another book that made me forget I was reading. I understand the hype. I'm excited for the third one even though I haven't even thought about starting the second one yet. I mean, I'm sure you've heard about this book already. It's Sarah J Maas, but it's urban fantasy, which I didn't know I actually enjoyed. It has a bunch of myths creatures which is super fun there's like a murder mystery in here which i guess i wasn't really expecting to be the entire storyline so that was fun the world is fairly easy to follow there were a couple things i had to ask christina about if you know her she's the biggest sjm fan <laughs> but yes overall a really good time and a classic i did read a classic northanger abbey this was the last classic i needed to read to hit my five classic goal for the year obviously jane austen i read this via audio yeah i gave it two stars I wasn't a fan and I've heard I was validated by everyone who messaged me saying yeah this is their least favorite Jane Austen they didn't like this one either so I still have hope I'm not giving up on Jane Austen I have a couple more of her books so I will be reading her again I want to feel like an intellectual and <laughs> read all her books so Northanger Abbey I couldn't even tell you I mean once I like looked up what the point was about like 50 pages no less than that like 20 pages in I was like okay what am I supposed to be looking for here and it's sat satire on gothic literature which I enjoyed and there's a mansion and there was a little bit of humor but I was just annoyed by the pining over this guy and I just was just overhearing the drama <laughs> to be honest so I think that part just really irked me and it just felt like it went on forever and it's such a short fucking book but I liked the notion that it was satire on gothic literature all right believe that's all for the recap so let's just do this if you're new here this is how I do my wrap up I take out three at a time and then I say whether I would want to reread, rewrite, or burn the books. I have about 10 minutes left, so we'll pause after a couple rounds. I read 31, so we'll do 10 rounds and then we'll have one wild card, ideally. I might have accidentally doubled up on writing these down, but we'll see. So I have Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates, which was my December full moon book club pick and my live show with Joey was super successful. <laughs> I will link that down below. There will be a spoiler filled vlog for Patreon only as always for these full moon book club picks, but I do run my own book club if you were unaware. I don't have that Google form that I used to talk about all the time anymore, but feel free to join whenever. You just have to read the book, show up to the live shows, say your comments, and it'll be a fun time. But we do have a Discord channel on Patreon for every single book so we can discuss it on there as we're reading it so that's super fun but I gave this one four stars I did guess the killer on page 12 but Darcy Coates has a way with red herrings and twists and turns and it really just keeps you captivated and guessing and second guessing yourself it was really good and it's a great book for winter obviously we heard about this book when we went to a Darcy Coates author event she mentioned that there was a severed head involved because like they go on this like tour in the mountain the next morning they wake up the boyfriend goes missing 
missing and then the tourist guide has his head severed and <laughs> it's just like on a tree stump or whatever so that's what got us to read it and got me to make it a book club pick so it was a super fun read highly recommend if you're looking for a winter thriller that's not how I do my wrap-ups. I have to go through all three of them. I, I'm sorry, I forgot. The Patient by Jasper DeWitt, which I read from the library and also on audio. And then Tokyo Ghoul Volume 6, which was a library book. I would rewrite Dead of Winter to make it less easy to guess. I don't know how I would do that because I'm not as smart as Darcy Coates, but I mean, that's that was my only gripe about it pretty much. So maybe change a couple things with the red herrings to make it less obvious that it's a red herring. At the same time, it was a really good book, so whatever. And then I would reread the Patient by Jasper DeWitt. I would probably reread this physically. It's a short book. This was recommended to me by one of my vamps, my patrons, Kayla, and I really enjoyed it. I was painting my paint by number project while I was listening to this, and it was creepy, and my jaw was dropping. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed how eerie it was and the psychological aspects of it, and then there's like a little twist. People keep getting this one mixed up with The Silent Patient, and like if you like The Silent Patient, you probably will like this, so would reread that and then I would burn Tokyo Ghoul Volume 6. I really did enjoy Volume 6. I think I gave it a 4 and a lot of them have been 3s. I liked learning more of, I guess, the science behind how the ghouls in the story are like built. There were certain scenes that I enjoyed reading and it didn't feel like it was like a filler volume because a lot of them tend to feel like that for long manga series. All right, next three. This will probably be the last one I do before going back to sprints and then I'll be back. Hopefully the lighting is still okay, but we have Creative Act by by Rick, I almost said Riordan, Rick Rubin, Murder in Mamon by Mia P. Mananzala, which I got from the library, and Instructions for Dancing by Nicola, is it Nicola or Nicola? Yoon. All right, obviously I would reread this, already mentioned it, I learned a lot, so I would want to reread that one day. I would, I think I would rewrite Instructions for Dancing. I don't know, I'm still like grappling with whether or not I enjoyed the magical realism in this. I liked how it played out and how it made the book end, like how it led to the ending being the way it was, but I just wasn't expecting magical realism. I mean, it was cool, but it just like threw me off a little bit because nothing about this cover says magical realism to me. This is like YA romance, which it was but there's something with like a magical book and then she acquires an ability and then it leads her to make a decision at the end and it almost made me cry again i listened to this on audio while i was painting by number i'm actually gonna sell this on my pango because I read it once. I'm not gonna read this again. It's a YA romance. I haven't read YA contemporary romances in years. I just had this as a book of the month add-on from a long time ago and I knew it was gonna be a quick read and I wanted to get it off my shelf if I wanted to sell it. So it will be on my Pango, but I had a good time. I still gave it four stars. The writing is pretty good and I also liked Everything Everything by this author way back when when I read it. So I'll probably pick up more by this author maybe if I feel like it. If I'm in a random YA mood. Also the main character's name is my ex's name so I would also change that character's name but the main male character sorry I would burn murder and mamon not because it was bad I still gave murder and mamon three stars it just wasn't my favorite in the series this is the Tita Rosie's kitchen series cozy mystery series written by a Filipino author so of course I love them I love listening to them and particularly because the narrator does such a good Filipino accent like nails it and she does like different I guess types of Filipino accents for each character like, like you can tell which characters have lived in America longer than like older generation characters and it's really relatable with like the food and the culture and everything but something about this mystery I was just like Meh. the second one is my favorite Homicide and Halo Halo that one's my favorite in the series thus far but I will keep reading them I actually met Mia P. Manansala and she was super nice I think she lives in Illinois so that's pretty cool but yeah I mean it's a cozy mystery there are a bunch of them and if anything I'll read the other ones in the series but yeah the first book is Arsenic and Adobo if were unaware, which was one of my very first book club picks. It's not wild. I have two minutes. The next three we have This Is How You Lose a Time War by Amal Al Motar. I'm gonna have to just say the books and then come back. This is a book by Adam Neville that I can't talk about because of the boycott, so just know that I finally finished it if you know that it's been on my current reads for a while, and by a while I mean months. I finally finished it. There's also a movie adaptation, so if that helps, but I'm not gonna say the title and I'm not gonna review it. We're gonna say, well, we'll see what the third one is. Heartstop Stopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman. Yeah, I would burn the one I can't talk about anyway. Okay. Ooh, I have a minute. I can do this. I could do this. So Heartstopper Volume 5, I would reread for sure. Hands down. Come on. We all know. I still gotta watch the 
show though, don't hate me, but I loved it. I gave it five stars, I'm pretty freaking sure. I better have given it five stars. Five stars, I read this during a 24 hour readathon with Christina and I filmed the whole thing, so my thoughts and whatever <laughs> in that 24 hour readathon will be in that vlog that I will upload probably way after this. So would reread that, would rewrite, this is how you lose a time where I would still reread this because this was the last book of the year that I read and I rushed it for sure, like I will wholeheartedly admit that. I just listened to the audio in one sitting while I was doing chores and stuff. And I love the writing. The writing is stunning. And I bought a physical copy from Pango to annotate because I knew it was going to be the stunning writing. But it's in letters and it's like this technotopia. I don't even know what that means, but it's confusing. So I would rewrite it to not be as confusing and I would reread it physically. Okay, moving on. I'll be back. We are back, baby, with a fresh batch of three. I don't know why I tell you these things. Like I could easily just edit it out and pretend we were here the whole time, but we keep it real on this channel. Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. A Guest in the House by Emily Carroll, which was a graphic novel I got from the library. And then Binti by, is it Nettie Okorafor, I think is the author, which I also got from the library and I listened to an audio. So this is not a great batch book. Okay, I would reread A Guest in the House because it was a graphic novel and I love Emily Carroll's art style. I just preferred Through the Woods by her. I gave a guest in the house three stars. There were ghosts involved. There was an angry wife, but there were also some fantastical interludes, I guess, that I wasn't really a fan of because it just like felt out of place. I don't know, but three stars for that. I would reread that though. I would rewrite Binti. I gave Binti two stars. It was one of those moments where I was like, okay, it's a short sci-fi, let me try it out. And it didn't work out. But I liked the concept of the story. I think if it were any other genre, my rating would have been higher. So maybe write the same concept. It had something to do with being like the best in school or something like that. Something like that. I couldn't tell you anything. Again, sci-fi just doesn't jive with my brain cells. Sorry that said nothing about the book, but the writing was good and I liked the audiobook. And I know this is a beloved series, so sad about that. But again, the genre. Northanger Abbey, I would burn. I already talked about it. Okay, moving on. Take a sip of my now cold ass coffee. Next, we have Ring Shout by P. Jelly, Jelly Clark, I think. I'm sorry if I butchered that, I'm so sorry. I listened to that on audio as well. Oh, My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon, which I already sold on Pango. And then another book that I can't mention, but it was a certain sequel, is what everyone's calling it, of one of my favorite books. Not gonna mention it, but I guess I would, I would reread it still, despite not giving it five stars. So I'm gonna say, I would reread that. I think I would rewrite My Darling Girl because I did enjoy it. I gave my darling girl, my darling girl, my darling girl four stars. I enjoy this horror trope. It was fine. I think the brother was unnecessary, which I said in my vlog, and the husband could have treated her a little bit better in terms of like dealing with her mental health. So those are the things I would change in rewriting this. But if I say the trope, it's most likely a spoiler, so I'm not gonna risk that. But it takes place around Christmas time. The main character has to take in her mother from being hospitalized or being in a retirement home. I can't remember. They've always had a toxic relationship and now they're trying to like make amends somehow. But then all the reasons behind the mother being toxic comes out from the woodwork. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to be careful. It was really good. I just sold it because I didn't think I would reread it. And I have a bunch of other Jennifer McMahon books that are probably gonna be five stars. Like Children on the Hill is five stars. So I just didn't feel the need to keep it on my shelves, but there was nothing too wrong with it. And I didn't think Joey would like it either really, but I didn't mind the kids in this book, which was weird. Like I didn't mind how, you know, how kids get invasive with like their questions and shit. Yeah, I didn't mind them. And I actually laughed a couple times with some of their innocent ass questions and their attitude and whatever, so. And then Ring Shout, I enjoyed the first half more than the second half. It kind of lost me, but my vamp, Rianne, recommended this to me. So I listened to it on audio. It's a really short audiobook. It's about this woman whose sole mission in life is to hunt down and kill Ku Klux Klan members. So yeah, that's the premise of that. And I was, my ears perked up with that for obvious reasons. It was written really well. There were a lot of discussions. I gave it three stars though, just because the way some parts were written just kind of like lost me. Maybe it was the audiobook for me that I didn't, that made it a lower rating. I don't know, but I would burn that one. I read it. It was cool. It was intense. It got gory sometimes, but I think I was expecting more gore as well. Okay, we have this one. I already know I'm gonna burn it. I'm not gonna talk 
about it. Moving on. King of Greed by Anna Huang. And When the Tiger Came Down from the Mountain by Nevo. I would reread King of Greed, obviously. I already talked about her. And then rewrite Nevo's book. I gave this one three stars. I definitely understood more of it than the first one, Empress of Salt and Fortune. I enjoyed hearing about the mammoths in this book and the tigers, but like understanding it and applying it to the concept as a whole of like whatever the message of the story was, I just couldn't grasp. I couldn't wrap my head around. So I would rewrite it to be more straightforward, less metaphorical. I know Nevo is known for their metaphorical ways and like folkloric type of writing, which is fine. I just, I'm too dumb for it. So I would rewrite it in that sense. Right, we have a lot more to go, so we're gonna go a little bit quicker now. Okay, I grabbed like five. We've got Love Light Farms by BK Borison, The Fury by Alex Michaelides. This is an arc that I got, and there, yeah, okay, that was the one of the doubles. I that's weird that I grabbed the Fury twice. And then we have House of Earth and Blood. Fuck. This is the toughest. This is the toughest. Fuck. Oh my god, how? Oh my god! I'm freaking out. This is the hardest decision. I don't know what to do. Cause initially I'd be like, reread. Cause I love this. I gave this five stars. But if I were gonna rewrite it, I'd rewrite it to be set in the fall instead of it being a Christmas romance. But I think I'm gonna burn it even though I gave it five stars. This is why I love doing wrap ups like this. Cause you'll never know. You'll literally never know. A five star could be a burn apparently. I would burn this because there are other Christmas romances that are in a small town that are fine. There are other books in the series that I could read. If I wanted to get a glimpse of these characters again, it's fine. It'll be fine. I'll burn this. I would reread this. I would. Despite how long it is, if I were gonna rewrite this, I would make it shorter because there are some parts that kind of dragged for me, but I would reread this. And then I would rewrite this to make it not following a celebrity. I love this book. I gave this four stars. I'm so excited for more people to read it so they could talk to me about it, but I love the way this was told. I love the ending. I love the twist. I definitely like this a lot more than the Maidens. The Silent Patient was really good as well. I gave that one five stars, but I gave the Maidens five, but that definitely deserved a three now that I'm not young and naive anymore <laughs> as the time that I read that book. But this is a four. It's not a five because I didn't like the characters. I didn't feel as connected to the characters as I, I don't know if, if his intention was to make us feel connected to the characters. I mean, it's obviously about the plot in this one, but also he emphasizes the notion of character as plot. So it gets messy. If you zone out even a little bit, especially towards the end, you'll miss a lot. The psychological part of this really got me. And I would also rewrite this in laying off a little bit on the inner child, the concept of the inner child, because I keep saying concept in this video. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now you're going to notice it. He really leaned into the inner child thing and kept repeating it. And like, I am, I got it. We get it. Okay. The sun is going, it's getting darker in here. I'm so sorry. But honestly, it's kind of a vibe. So whatever. He does the psychological thing. He does the Greek mythology thing that he infuses in his writing pretty seamlessly, to be honest. It just follows a movie star and all, or a former movie star. Yeah. Reclusive ex-movie star and one of the most famous women in the world. And some of y'all may know that I'm not a fan of reading about celebrities or like movies other than Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones and whatever. There are exceptions, but usually I don't grab gravitate towards books that follow famous people because I don't like the superficial types of themes like or not themes but like I guess premises where like money is involved fame or beauty like yeah so those are the things I would change about this book but otherwise I really enjoyed my time I read it in like two days it's so fast it's so fun moving on Wicked Villain Shorts by Katie Robert Mimi's Tales of Terror by Junji Ito and whoever wrote the original stories I'm sorry I forgot and then Necrosis by Rain Havoc shit Okay. I would reread Jinji Ito because I would always reread Jinji Ito. This was a short story collection. I love his story collections. The only thing is it wasn't an original story. He remade an another author's story and just made it into his art style, but I really enjoyed Mimi's Tales of Terror. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Tomie in some ways, and I actually liked following the same character throughout these stories. So I guess in a way it was all a continuous story, just following Mimi in different scenarios, but I really enjoyed some of these stories and a lot of them creeped me out actually. I I would rewrite Necrosis and honestly just get to the twist faster like I said and then I would burn Wicked Villain Shorts. I enjoyed this.
this. I gave this, oh, I gave Mimi's Tales of Terror four stars and I gave Wicked Villain Short three stars. I enjoyed seeing more from my favorite characters from the series. I haven't finished the series yet, so that's probably one of my problems, but I also didn't really care. I have two more left that I should have read before this one and it gave a little bit away, but I wasn't worried about it. I would reread this maybe if I missed the characters at all, but I would burn it in this scenario, I guess. It's just short stories following the characters from each book in the Wicked Villain series. My favorites are Jasmine and Jafar and Tink and Hook so far. There are multiple stories revolving characters that I, I'm not a huge fan of, so that's another reason why this was mediocre. But it was fine. Some of the stories were really fucking cute, actually. Oh my god. Oh, there's more. I was like, there's no way I'm almost done. Okay. Really Good Actually by Monica Heisey. Is it Heisey or Heisey? I have no idea. Scream For Us and An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. I would burn Scream For Us. I would rewrite An Education in Malice to probably make them all adult instead of new adult. Yeah. And then I would reread Really Good Actually. This is about a 28 year old divorcee. It's lit fic about a messy 20 something, which is my favorite type of lit fic. And you're just following her throughout her life with her silly shenanigans and her sad girl moments and just the mundanities of life after divorce and navigating life after that, trying to find yourself after being with someone for so long. I think she was with this person for, I want to say 13 years, but I could be wrong. Also could be mixing it up with Below by Laurel Hightower because I think she was with her husband for 13 years. I can't remember, but this was really good, actually. I made that joke before, but I keep, okay. I tabbed a lot, I laughed a lot. I really enjoyed this. The audiobook's pretty good too. I followed along towards the end and I really liked the character growth in this. All right, do I have three left? Aren't I supposed to have, oh, I have one in the corner over there. Okay, well, we've got Neverlanders. I forgot the author's name, but it's a graphic novel that I had an arc for from way back when. And I just like read it physically and gave my feedback to up my net galley score. Tokyo Ghoul volume five another one from the library and the writing retreat by julia bart which i actually just sold on my pingo i gotta wrap it up still i would reread this actually despite me selling it i would reread it because just out of these three it was pretty riveting i just didn't like how this one particular character acted and how she was tolerated and how people dismissed it just because she was a woman and not a man. And I just don't like that double standard. You'll know if you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. Probably, hopefully, maybe, I don't know. I like the twist in this one. I think it was a great execution of like the isolated setting and it was almost a culty vibe, but not really. Cause you know, they were in a retreat and there were some creepy things going on while they were at this cabin or whatever they were writing at. I don't want to give too much away, but this is a great book for like the wintery setting. The audio book was pretty good as well. Who was the character that I love? I forgot her name, but she was the only black woman on this retreat and she was a bad bitch. I loved her. Kira. So I really enjoyed this. It got creepy and unsettling at times, but I gave it three stars because of the reasons that I said, but I would reread it maybe, possibly, probably not, but just in this case. A Tokyo Ghoul volume five. Mm, I'd probably burn it. I think I gave that one three stars. I burned that. I couldn't tell you what went on. I think that one was one that felt like a filler volume, at least for me personally. I don't know. I'm just reading it for funsies. I'm not taking it too seriously in terms of like remembering what's going on and thinking critically about what's happening in Tokyo Ghoul. It's just another manga series that I'm getting through, I guess, and it's dark, so I like it overall. I'm on volume seven now, so. Neverlanders, I would probably rewrite, maybe a different type of retelling, because it's a Peter Pan retelling. Maybe I would use a different source material, because I like some of the characters and their like personal storylines, and I like the art style. I just, I'm not a big fan of Peter Pan. I don't know what it is, but I also kind of want to reread Peter and the Starcatchers, because I wanted to finish that series so bad when I was in middle school. They were so intimidating to me. I want to see if I actually like them better as an adult. Okay, the last one, it's a wild card, so it can be whichever one I want, is Below by Laurel Hightower. I already mentioned it twice in this video, but I would reread this. This was another one I read at the cozy cabin, so it was fun to just power through it in a couple sittings. Again, it's about this divorcee, and she's like grappling with trying to knock her husband's voices out of like influencing her life. She ends up in the snowstorm, and then yeah, Mothman's involved, but the way, it's like almost a subtle, way of describing Mothman. It was just a cute little campy time, but when I tell you that I would not make the same decisions as this woman did, she's a little, she's a little, she did the most 
in this book and it just could never be me but i enjoyed reading about her experience so that is it all 31 books in 31 days of december let me know if if you've read any of these books agree about any of them disagree whatever i don't care let me know in the comments also if you don't want to comment anything if you made it to the end of this video let's put a crown emoji to represent king of greed <laughs> thank you so so much for watching have a vampy day don't forget to do some self-care and I'll Oh my god, I was almost done and it cut me off. Hope you have a vampy day. Don't forget to do some self-care and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!